Hi, everyone, and welcome to uh, our fourth quarter 2018 presentation. My name is Rui Kazais, and I'm here with Stian, as usual. Good uh, evening or <coughs> good afternoon, depending on where in the world you are. We're because this time, for the first time ever, we're doing the, our quarterly presentation and results from our North Carolina studio in the United States of America. So it's, uh, it's very exciting to be here in a place with a great barbecue and great people and to be talking to you about a really nice report and uh, some exciting news we have. And with that, we go straight to the juicy bits. We are happy to announce that uh, uh, 2018 was our best year to date. Uh, we had uh, very strong numbers that we'll go in into. We had the first all and very successful uh, launch as, uh, of a game that we publish. We are very happy with uh, the reception the game has gotten and it solidifies our position as a, as a publisher. We, uh, during the quarter, had an acquisition of a ZPX, a Lisbon studio that uh, we communicated some time ago. We'll go through that. And uh, finally, we announced today, just uh, a few minutes ago, that uh, we have a part partnership established with Legendary Entertainment for making games on Dune, the Dune IP. That we're super excited about that opportunity and we'll be uh, going a tiny bit into, into what that means. So without further ado, we go straight into the financials. Yeah, <coughs> and we're very happy to present uh, these numbers, the best year ever in uh, Funcom history. Uh, we start with the fourth quarter results. We see revenue is 8.4, so that's plus 166%, and EBITDA 4.7 million dollars plus 841. We also see EBIT and profit are significantly up from uh, fourth quarter last year. Uh, Mutant and <coughs> Colon Exiles were the key drivers uh, of uh, the revenue this quarter. Uh, as we pointed out, we're very happy with the Mutant uh, release. Uh, and if you look into details here, there's between EBITDA and EBIT, there's a bit of a difference. Uh, and that's the depreciation that are higher than the previous quarters. And that's because we have, uh, uh, on most of our new games, we have a quite short amortization period. Uh, and we've then uh, amortized a lot the first quarter, being uh, for fourth quarter. So uh, that increases amortization. Yeah, and th uh, this amortization is different per game, right? Or Yeah. So, so we have uh, but most of our new, <coughs> new games is uh, 18 months and uh, accelerated amortization, which means most of the kind of cost in terms of amortization is taken the first or in the start and then less uh, further on. So that's good that we've kind of taken a lot of that... Uh, uh, cost or uh, amortization, as it's called, already. Yeah, and of course, 841% uh, up on EBITDA uh, um, is is an amazing number uh, in percentages. It's so from a small base, but so, uh, uh, we're happy with <laughs> also the increase of four four million uh, dollars. Is, uh, yes, that that. But it, it's it's nice to have plus 841% on a on a report, though. I, I like that type of number. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what we see on on the annual figures, which maybe are. Uh, a, a bit more representative uh, in that way on the next slide. Uh, there's still <coughs> a healthy improvement from last year. Revenue coming in at 33.8, that's plus 46%. EBITDA at 7.7 .7 is even higher with 78% and also EBIT uh, plus 53%. So, so we're, we're doing um, a lot better than 2017, which was the best year at that point in Funcom history. 2000 is the best year to date. So. Um, yeah, we, we're very happy that uh, the strategic turnaround that was uh, set in place a few years ago is uh, bearing fruits. And and uh, uh, I was joking about the eight hundred forty-one percent. It's uh, we we need to underline that uh, of course quarters will be very variable. Uh, some quarters will uh, will have uh, much better numbers than others, and quarters with launches especially will have uh, higher numbers. Q four had mutant as a launch, and uh, Conan Exos uh, has continued to perform well. So it uh, compared to the year before in Q4 17, we did not have a launch. So it also comes to show the, the, the strength in our strategy that uh, having more launches, more products coming out uh, lead to, of course, uh, better numbers. But taking the, he the year as a, as a whole uh, uh, allows us to avoid some of the, the peaks and valleys of, uh, of the quarters with the launches or not. And we see that the, on the year, the results are still uh, very good. Yeah, uh, that's a very good point. And we see here cash uh, is up, equity is up significantly, and uh, the only number with the negative before 
is uh, debt because we got rid of the debt. So now we're debt free, mm. which we're also very <coughs> happy about. Absolutely. Uh, and then, uh, as we pointed out, uh, in gaming, uh, the, the uh, results do vary from quarter to quarter. And so here on the left hand side, you see the actually reported numbers per quarter. Uh, but we don't manage our um, business and re releases and so on in order to smooth in the quarters. We manage the release to, may to, to release the games when it makes sense for the gamers, when it makes sense to get the most bang for the bucks and the most attention. And when the games are ready quality-wise to get released. Of course, yeah. So, so <coughs> they need to be ready and they need to be a meaningful window. Um, and some quarters uh, there's less uh, happening and other quarters there's more. So on the right-hand side, uh, to, to give a better picture of the underlying trend. We have then smoothened that out by applying an average, so 12-month rolling uh, revenue. Uh, and the trend is encouraging. We, we see it uh, leads up to 52% EBITDA margin, which is also the best 12-month rolling a EBITDA margin we've had in the, in the company's history. Uh, and then <coughs> here, uh, cash and debt. This is also a, a favorite uh, slide of mine where we go from a position with uh, a lot of debt and very little cash to the opposite. Uh, so now we have a sound uh, cash balance and no debt. Uh, and it's worth men mentioning that uh, the significant increase in cash has been in a period where we have invested heavily into the games mm. uh, to the pleasure of gamers out there today, but even more so uh, to the gamers of, of uh, late, uh, new games uh, this year and next year. Uh, so just quarter four in 2018, we invested $3.9 million into, into games and uh, 2018 overall, we invested 15.2 million. Mm. And we'll continue to do so. Uh, that's our strategy. We're building up activities. We're publishing more and more quarters, which also diversifies the business. Uh, and then we, of course, continue to invest in those. And we'll do that in 2019. And we'll see the fruits of it. Partially we would do already. Partially we'll see it by new launches in 2019. And even more so in 2020. Yeah. We'll get back to the pipeline, but uh, our two biggest internal games will be launching in 2020. Yeah. So the, the promising thing is that the, the, our results have been very positive in 2018. And we've been investing uh, heavily into more games into existing games, but also uh, mostly into, into uh, more games and, and activities. So uh, the, hopefully the numbers will be even better in the future at some point when those games start coming out. And speaking of games, going into the, the game activities, um, we uh, of course released Mutant Tier Zero Road to Eden. The game has been uh, favorably received. We, uh, we are happy with the reception. Uh, it's been uh, uh, nominated for awards, it got some awards, there's been very positive press and uh, a lot of um, good activity from players playing the game. The game released on December 4th and December, or, or the whole of Q4, is a, a very active AAA season before Christmas where the big companies put out um, many hundreds of millions of dollars in, of marketing into, into the games they're making. So they, uh, it uh, can be a bit hard to get some attention. But uh, we felt that the first week of December and after talking to some partners uh, could be a good window. Uh, the game was well received. Uh, we feel the, the launch is very successful to us. Uh, and we have to address one of the things that some players have said, that the, the game longevity and repeat, uh, repeatability wasn't the highest. We have now up, uh, released today the Stalker Trials uh, mode, Stalker Trials free update that uh, adds the possibility for you to play the maps over and over again in a challenge mode so that you can play it, get a better score, do the map without taking any, da any damage, uh, share that, uh, the, that score with friends, see how much of your friends have gotten in that map, try to beat their score. And we see that me as a fan of the game and uh, having played quite a bit of it, it really makes me want to continue playing. And uh, it's, it's a bit more what strategy gamers uh, um, uh, were, were uh, wanting in the game. And Mutant being a, a nice blend of RPG and strategy uh, the needs to cater for, for that audience as well. Uh, we also have some uh, exciting additional activities coming. We'll uh, talk about them, uh, about them as soon as the marketing team uh, lets us. Uh, they will, of course, make sure that the, as many players as possible see it. And of course, the game will be available in uh, uh, stores, having promotions and all that in the, in the coming months. So we're very happy with the game as our first published game. Uh, we think it uh, establishes our reputation nicely and uh, we learn from it. We uh, take those learnings into the, the coming games and we keep on making more. 
other game activities uh, during and after the quarter. So on Conan Exiles, we had the pets update and uh, two DLCs coming out, uh, one of which uh, a uh, Japanese-themed DLC uh, to coincide with some of the activities in, in Japan. Um, we have, after the quarter, done some quality of life updates. We're working on a new voice solution and overall preparations to have a really good version on PC for a Steam free weekend coming on March 7th. Uh, we know that free weekends can be a very, uh, very positive way of engaging with players, old and new, that uh, can give the game a try and see if they like it. And if they like it, then they will, um, they will buy it. So that it's our hope that uh, players that maybe have tried it before, maybe even refunded in the past, now go go take a peek at the game and see how much better the game is. And uh, you know, buy the game, maybe buy the DLC, play for a while, tell their friends. We think Conan Exile still has a lot of potential, and the free weekend is a very good way to to measure that. Then, uh, were you going to say yeah. something? <coughs> and I'm really looking forward to that uh, free weekend. And the team has been working uh, super hard uh, recently to get the kind of the, the details even better and tweak uh, mm -hmm. a lot based on uh, user feedback. Uh, so, so that they'll be. Yeah, we're looking forward to see the results of it. Uh, and all of these updates that we the team is doing to, to the PC version will go to the console version as well. But of course, with the free weekend happening, they are currently focusing more on PC. But this will roll out to, to console very, uh, very soon after. Um, on the MMOs, uh, uh, we have uh, on Secret World Legends, on all of them, we did the events for the, the seasonal activities. Um, uh, on Secret World, we also did the Dark Agartha update. We did the Stone Age update after the quarter. Um, on Age of Conan, we did the, the Saga of Blood server, uh, similar to the previous Saga of Zath, but this on a PvP style and we've done some other things after the quarter such as a new horde and the the, the fact that the saga, uh, saga of blood server ended we did some activities around that and on anarchy online we had uh, events as well how we know and winter event and we have a soon soon tm uh because the, in games everything is uh all we always underestimate how long things take uh, a new subscriber only server which is very exciting and we think will uh will the, the players will really enjoy to have that opportunity called for now Rubica 2019. Yeah, we're excited about that, and <coughs> particularly being in, in the US here where, where we actually meet a great team that's uh, working very hard to make all these things uh, happen and, and keep uh, these games, games uh, alive and keep the audience uh, engaged and uh, continue to give them new stuff uh, all, all the time. Mm -hmm. Then Conan and Conquered, we <coughs> revealed during the, the quarter on December 8th that uh, the, the project that we've been working on with Petroglyph is. Uh, called Conan and Conquered, a real-time strategy game more focused on defense. Uh, in a way, it's, it's not tower defense, but it's a game where you will defend against waves of enemies. Uh, it was more of a teaser type review with a very nice uh, CGI, and uh, we will be reviewing more uh, on uh, select events in the next coming months. Uh, it's the first ever strategy game set in the world of Conan. We feel it's a, it's a, a world that's rich with strife and conflict that we can use for, for this type of game. Uh, it's single player and two player co-op. We really believe in co-op as a good way for players to, to play together and get their friends to come and play. It is releasing in Q2, so very soon. PC only, published by us, developed by Petroglyph, and it's inspired by Robert E. Howard, the, the writer of Conan, uh, Black Colossus story where uh, Conan uh, is part of a group of mercenaries, goes to a city and the princess asks him for help defending the city. Um, and Conan promptly does so because he's bribed with riches and uh, other typical Conan things, let's put it that way. Um, so I'm very excited about the game. I think the game is a, is a, a perfect match for Conan and for uh, our cooperation with Petroglyph. It's been great working with them and we, we hope to get the game to, to your hands soon. On the, the this partnership, I mean, the, the I don't think anyone expected it. We've been working on it for uh, for a while, and we're super excited. I'm a big fan of the uh, of Dune. Uh, it's one of my favorite, by far, one of my favorite uh, sci-fi IPs. Um, so when when we were we we started talking about the possibility of doing something together, it was it was uh, something I I really wanted to to do, and I something that I feel fits with Funcom very well. So it is a, a, a partnership for uh, video games based on the Dune IP, a six-year partnership for a minimum of three PC and console games, uh, one of which is the game we had mentioned before that we uh, are in early stages in Oslo, uh, the open-world multiplayer project. 
and the there will be the legendary is working on a, a new film there's been some news the it's directed by Denis Villeneuve scheduled for uh, 20th of November of next year um, so the, that will revitalize the IP and uh, together with a good, a good pipeline of games we think it can be uh, a really good partnership where we bring people that maybe don't know Dune and they play the game and they come into the Dune world get into the, the Dune uh, uh, Hollywood side of things as well and the books of course and with the, with the new movies uh, uh, then there will be people coming from the movie side that see the movie and go, oh, well, you know, what else is there? And they see that there are games made by us. So we think it's uh, it fits very well with Funcom. It's uh, a type of IP that um, we it's a bit like Conan in the sense that uh, there's a, a it's very well known. There's a very a strong core following of people that really know it. That then it doesn't been activated in games uh, uh, as much as much as it deserves lately. So we hope to to be able to bring some exciting different types of games to the table, one of which will be this open world multiplayer. An open world multiplayer is, um, it's hard to define. It's a, is it a Conan Exiles type game, but not necessarily like Conan Exiles. Uh, the details on what that game will be is, will, will only be revealed when we're ready. So that, that will still take a while. Just like we <coughs> like to diversify and have multiple games out there. It's also good to have multiple big IPs. And just to add on the point uh, that, that um, it fits Funcom very well. Uh, you make the best gaming uh, video games if the people developing them are really passionate about it. So in this process, just to check that uh, what uh, yeah, to uh, check that we had the right assumption, we did a survey among the employees, and we're so positively surprised that uh, a, a lot we have so many fans, big fans. After Dune, we couldn't share the news before today uh, because um, that, that, that was confidential. But we were very uh, happy and confident that uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, eager people to, to work on uh, that uh, IP going forward. What Steen is trying to say is that you, we wanted to check that it wasn't just me liking it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we checked and uh, thankfully it wasn't just me, but uh, uh, which is the most important thing. So it, it was good that... We, uh, we did a, a nice survey of lots of, of, of sci-fi IPs and see what, uh, what people really liked. On to strategy and pipeline. Yeah, <coughs> so we, we announced the acquisition of ZPX, which is uh, something we're also very happy about. We've been working with these for two years, so we know them well, and we've been very impressed with what they've delivered. They've worked on many of our games already that have uh, been launched. So. The players will uh, already have seen their work and uh, enjoyed uh, the, the quality they put into it. Uh, and from a strategic uh, rational, it's important for us with more and more games in the pipeline and in operation, uh, just to have uh, more people uh, available and, and be, be, be certain. Uh, having variable cost can also make sense to outsource certain parts, but we like long-term uh, relationships. Uh, and. This is a way to, to secure that. Uh, ZPX will continue as an uh, independent company that will also work for, the, for others. But it secures us uh, to have uh, uh, development capacity going forward. Mm. They're right now 15, mm. but they're hiring a lot. We see a lot of new applications after this announcement also. Uh, so, so we are looking for great talent. And uh, quite soon, we, we think we'll be twice as many people as uh, today. With, with uh, our pipeline of games, with so many games, both internal and, and published, we see we need some flexibility to, to be able to provide support to the teams. ZPX is going to be uh, our little cavalry, cavalry unit that we can uh, move around quickly in the, in, the, in the battlefield of game development to help out the teams that, uh, that need some support. So um, we're very happy with working with them for the last few years and uh, uh, we'll we'll continue. Yeah. And being Portuguese, of course, you know all about Portugal. And one thing that surprised me a little bit was uh, that the cost uh, level or cost of living and so on uh, is significantly, yeah, it's much uh, better than our other locations. Uh, yeah. so, so that also makes it easier to kind of provide, uh, provide quality gaming content to a sensible cost. So that's mm. also mm. very meaningful. Absolutely. And then uh, we did uh, say something about the, the price. And I think it's... Uh, very sensible uh, price. Uh, we issued uh, 150,000 uh, euros uh, worth of shares, uh, and there was uh, uh, kind of other small cash amount. Uh, so uh, the, the, uh, it makes a lot of sense uh, in the cost savings from having 
kind of uh, quality development uh, available there rather than going to other uh, expensive outsourcing outfits. Th this uh, makes mm. uh, a lot of sense uh, very quickly. Yeah. And <coughs> this slide we presented uh, sometimes before, so I'm not going to go into detail, uh, but I think uh, the key takeaway points here is one, there's a lot of different revenue streams that you see the, in the, the blue boxes. And two, there's a lot of new launches that you see in additions per year. Uh, and that will quickly build up a bigger portfolio, more mm. games, more uh, more of the steady revenue from the old games and uh, launches, if not every quarter. And that will be at least uh, in most of the quarters uh, going forward, uh, there will be yeah. a launch. And we're in the beginning of this ro uh, rollout of the strategy. So, uh, of course, there, there are fewer launches and we're investing into getting these games out. And uh, um, uh, yeah, so we, Mutant being the first game that actually comes out even though we've had this strategy for a while it takes a while to put in motion then on this on the pipeline of games um, we had this slide last time where we had mutant all over here as well of course mutant is now launched uh, we haven't uh, secured any additional game we have some interesting possibilities on the table and what we see is that right now we have five games confirmed uh, two of which are published games what we call external externally developed and three internal so Conan and Conquered is, as we spoke, uh, re getting ready for launch in Q2 um, by Petroglyph. Another game that is with the, fun with the Funcom IP uh, for Halloween this year, that is in production, PC console. And then for next year, uh, we have uh, uh, Heroic Signatures IP uh, multiplayer co-op shooter game being developed here in, in North Carolina that we're uh, looking through, playing, giving feedback, looking at the plans this week that we've been here. Um, and so after the stream, we're actually going to go away with the board and do test uh, playing. Yes, we're so going to be playing the, to that also. the the game that has a, uh, a really nice looking new build for us to try out. Um, so uh, that's that's now we are saying we didn't say this last qu last quarterly presentation. We're saying that that's a game for release next year. Uh, then the Conan single player game that's in production uh, in Oslo uh, or in pre production. It's also set to release next year. Also, PC and console. We haven't said much about that game. We'll, as soon as we're ready, we'll reveal more when marketing thinks is the the best timing. And then the 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 game that we had mentioned before that was in concept stage is still in concept stages. Uh, it is with the Dune IP, open world multiplayer, and uh, uh, some of the, the why is it still in concept stage for so many months? Well, we needed to also secure the IP and making sure that uh, we give the proper focus to both Conan Exiles, that is still a very strong uh, revenue generating game, and to the Conan single player game that's also being made in Oslo. This means we have five new games, but that isn't the only thing we have active. We consider that we have uh, 13 active projects, active meaning that uh, we invest into them. Uh, so the, the Longest Journey and Dreamfall, for example, are not active. We sell them, but we don't have uh, any costs associated with them. But the, the MMOs, Conan Exiles, Mutant, and a few other things that we have in, internally, we consider them to be existing uh, or prototype game projects that are active. So we have eight such projects that uh, we are investing that are not new games. They are things based on existing games and five uh, whole new games that uh, we have in process. And with that, we get to the summary. So 2018 was the most profitable year in Funcom's history. We had a successful Mutant, Mutant Year Zero launch. It definitely established our position as a, a, uh, a publisher of uh, reputable games. We completed the ZPX acquisition. We're debt-free, have a strong cash position. We have a promising pipeline, and we now secured uh, a great deal of, with Legendary Entertainment for games based on the Dune IP. So super exciting, lots of really great games on different IPs that fit the, the, Funcom, the Funcom DNA, the Funcom spirit. Um, that we we are working very hard to make really good to get out when when they're ready when they're of the good quality and when we can. Yeah, and on the Dune, <coughs> we, we we can't reveal too much, but, but just follow the news so that there will be more new uh, more more information in in the news uh, in the coming coming yeah, time. Yeah, so it, it, that's important. I mean, how much information will there be on this? Uh, uh, some of it is of we're working very closely with Legendary on the information on the. On, on Dune, on, and they will they have their plans on the, on the Hollywood side of things. We'll have our plans on the gaming side of things. 
uh, we will do some joint announcement we'll do some separate announcements so there will be news over the coming months and uh, quarters and things like that about uh, the games and uh, uh, on the games we will not review any details until we think it makes sense from a game pr and marketing point of view uh, we will give uh, any any meaningful changes we'll update every quarter and if there's anything uh, that needs a separate notice we'll we'll do so yeah and as usual uh, if uh, you haven't done so please ask questions over at investor at funcom.com or in the chat uh, on twitch and we will try to to answer some questions now uh, we uh, are also available at investor at funcom.com uh, later if necessary um, we have a mailing list that you can subscribe to to get any uh, the news on the the financial side of things so you can go there to get any news that we we put out. And with that, I'll go take a look at the list of questions. So we can do this. Just give us uh, some seconds to take a look at them. There's a question about uh, uh, platforms. So in the report, you wrote that additional stores and platforms support such as Nintendo Switch are planned. Is it both uh, for Conan Exiles and Mutant Tier Zero? Well, we don't say it in the report. So if it, we don't say in the report what we, uh, which ones, and it means uh, we're not ready to, to talk about them. We evaluate, we are now starting to evaluate Nintendo Switch to um, all games. And some games might not make sense from a game point, point of view. Some games might not make sense from a technical point of view. It might be too hard to get them there. Uh, and we look at comparable games and what have they done on, uh, on Switch and other platforms. Uh, so uh, we are not going to say if it's both for Conan Exile, Mutant Tier Zero, or any other any any other games. There'll be news when uh, uh, when we're ready to to talk about any details. And I see there's a question on net financial items, which is uh, negative uh, this uh, quarter, uh, with uh, one one point one million dollars. And the key thing <coughs> to, about this uh, financial statement is FX, which is um, also part of the question. Uh, and it's uh, not cash money, it's a theoretical thing. And the reason is, is that we have uh, a lot of cash in NOC, whereas we report in dollars. So, so when the dollar gets stronger, which is actually to our benefit, because we have revenues in dollars, a lot of revenues in dollars, and our cost is split more between uh, NOC and, and dollars and uh, euros. Uh, but um, yeah, the, the, because we have a, a dollars as uh, reporting currency, that actually is a paper loss or a loss yeah. on our PL. Yeah. Uh, and so th that's the main driver behind uh, that number. Uh, previously, we could also have uh, interest on uh, on uh, debt, but, but now we're debt free. So, so all of it is uh, effects. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, so there's other small details like mm. uh, credit card fees and, and so on. But, mm. but um, yeah, so, so uh, now, now in, the, in the future, we, uh, we will interest rate wise, that will be net positive. Uh, so, so it's the FX that will continue to drive uh, mm. each quarter, positive or negative, depending on the way exchange rates uh, move. Yeah. Uh, there's a question about plans for AO, AOC, and Secret World. We we don't have any plans. We are ready to talk about now. We're launching the new AO uh, subscription-only server uh, soon. Uh, we can talk about that, and then on the others, nothing. We're ready. Uh, there's a question on uh, uh, yeah. amortization and depreciation. Uh, on the different games uh, so on the old mmo games where the initial games as fully amortized uh, and uh, there's been uh, new additions in uh, uh, that is on, on the books they're, they're smaller amounts they are uh, written or amortized over five years con exile is amortized over two years and uh, mutant air zero is over uh, amortized over 18 months uh, that's probably what we'll do with the uh, uh, most games in uh, in the pipeline also so that's uh, according to the accounting rules there's an um, assessment on each game and the type of game and so on so that's what we'll uh, apply or what we have applied and will apply going forward mm. there's a question about uh, the inclusion of mutant year zero in on microsoft game pass um, uh, question is asking about the details of the deal which we don't disclose it's a deal confidential between uh, Funcom and uh, Microsoft so we can talk about details on that in, in general 
uh, we are happy with the inclusion of the game on the Microsoft Xbox subscription service. We'll consider other subscription services in the, in the future, and that's a, a normal part of business of, uh, uh, of commercializing a game these days. And then another question on uh, FX, uh, and the question is regarding the FX loss, would hedging be a considerable option to reduce the US dollar exposure? Then I'd just like to highlight again that uh, a P&L loss doesn't necessarily mean a cash loss. So actually what would reduce the FX loss this month was to report currency or reporting currency. So if you reported in, Nor in, in the Norwegian krona, it would have been FX uh, gain the, the, this mm. uh, quarter. Mm. Uh, and yeah. we might actually consider to um, on the subsidiary uh, heroic signatures holding some of the IP rights. They also flow into this because they're uh, the domination in NOC. And then when the dollar uh, exchanges, that impacts the PL. We might actually uh, have a US dollar uh, denomination of that company. Mm. But again, that just highlights that this is mostly paper uh, profit or paper loss. Uh, due to currency yeah. uh, and the hedging we, we do actually do uh, cash wise because we uh, have cash on the uh, in the bank and then we make sure to have uh, a lot of knock because we have a lot of knock cost mm. and then we have a bit of dollars because we also have dollar costs yeah. but, but, but that's the hedging we do yeah we need there are quite a few questions yeah. so we need to, to speed up a bit so uh yes the uh, mutant tier zero uh, is being released and placed on playstation store in japan uh that is correct there was a question about that uh, we try to get our games out, and, and some stores take a bit longer to get out uh, than others. Uh, Conan Exiles DLC packs, did the sales meet our expectations? We are happy with the, the sales of DLC, and we continue to do so. Uh, will Funcom make mobile games in the future? It is not in our plans to make mobile games. We focus on PC and console, which is what we know best, and uh, both from uh, developing, but also the games we play. Um, when will we see more of the new Conan game? Uh, when the marketing team is ready to, to I know you want to, to know to know when that that will happen, but uh, it is when they feel the, the, that the, it is the right time to to reveal it to the world. So we'll we'll do it at the best possible moment. Um, when will we get gameplay videos from Conan and Conquered? Same same answer. It'll be when the marketing team feels it's the best time to get press attention, gamer attention, and uh, when the game is at the state that we feel comfortable with sh showing it in the best possible light. Uh, what kind of partnership with Dune? Uh, well, it's a partnership, so we will work together with them to bring Dune to the new, a new audience, both on movies and on games and uh, on other things Legendary is uh, working on. So we'll uh, partner up and working very closely together on the visuals, on the story, the lore, the setting, uh, and all that. As many of you know, Dune 2 was one of the genre-defining big games. Mm. And we hope, of course, to make some of the yeah, some great Dune games uh, pretty yep. soon. Uh, why are we looking at the premium business model instead of looking at free-to-play model? Uh, do you feel that there's longevity in the premium model now that the large companies are focusing on free-to-play? Well, I would, I would question that the large companies are focusing on free-to-play. Free-to-play has been very strong for many, many years now. Uh, but uh, we have seen a resurgence of premium on, on the last few years, uh, both from companies big and small. I think that uh, different business models fit different game types uh, differently. Uh, there isn't a single business mod model that will always be there, uh, that, will, that will dominate like that. Uh, we see that the, the games we make are uh, um, fit the premium model best. It is also the players that, those games pl uh, that play those games prefer that business model. And the free-to-play business model uh, fits other things. Our MMOs are free-to-play. Uh, so free-to-play is not out of the question, but it's definitely not the focus of what we do. Uh, there's a question regarding team size uh, of different projects. Uh, we are not going to give detailed number on uh, how many people work on each project, but uh, uh, the, the it's largest... It constantly changes when we, we, we see to different times. What yeah, not, not constantly, but they are separate phases. But uh, the... the um, the project, the co-op multiplayer uh, shooter project in North Carolina is uh, uh, probably, uh, yeah, it's our biggest, uh, largest team right now. Uh, the, the Basically, the internal teams are the large teams and the external projects are uh, our smaller teams. Uh, and then within that, we can say that the, the Conan single player game being done in Oslo is, let's call it the medium sized team, medium to large, not as big as Conan Exiles Oslo or, or the, the shooter game uh, is right now. 
can you say anything about the DLC for mutants? Uh, we cannot say anything, but we can say that, of course, we are considering DLCs for uh, our games. And finally, do we have any general information on regards to recruitment, HR, and general well-being of the workforce in different offices? Um, well, we I've been uh, staffing up uh, in both studios. The, our North Carolina studio is now almost fully staffed. All, we're still recruiting and open for uh, quite a few positions in Oslo, uh, probably more, still more than 20, maybe still close to, to 30. We, we strive to provide uh, an environment that is uh, relaxed and uh, casual with uh, uh, what we call a, a, a focus on uh, working efficiently. Uh, we want people to have a good work-life balance in the sense that when they are at work, they work efficiently and focused. And uh, we try to avoid as much as possible people to overwork and uh, what, what is called crunch or death marches. We've been through them. Uh, I've been through them. I don't wish it on anyone. And they, when they normally happen, they, it means that has been uh, a lack of planning. So we are very self-conscious about that and we try very hard to, to avoid them. Uh, they still happen m more than what I would like, but uh, we, we try very hard to, to make it a, a very good place for people to, to work in. We, I personally f really believe that we spend so much time at work in our lives that it needs to be uh, something you enjoy. And I don't want people to just work in games because they like games. I want, also want people to work in games because they like the environment, the people, the, the openness, the ability to, to, for their voice to matter in the, in the making of the game. And uh, a good work-life balance is important so that we make great games without burning out. Uh, I've seen too, ma too much of that. And in terms of recruiting, we now also have Portugal, right? So both yes. in, in the US, sure. uh, Norway and Portugal, we have three attractive locations. Mm -hmm. Uh, so gaming uh, talents uh, out there, you know, uh, yeah, w w w where to apply. I think that was it. We are about the time that we wanted to take. So thank you very much for listening. If you have additional questions, please email us at the investor at And uh, well, I guess we'll see you in three months in another Twitch stream. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in. And thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.